The Artcraft Theater is located in downtown Franklin. It's the community's only theater. It's been operating continuously since 1922, but today its look and operation are more like the 1940s or 50s. For example, people at the Artcraft are convinced that popcorn not only is an important ingredient of movie going, but must be provided properly. We pop it fresh every night, yes sir, and we use real butter. Ticket price seven days a week is a dollar and a half, and most of the patrons know the man with whom they deal, the manager, Reg Hartman. I greet everyone at night and when they come to the movies and try to say goodnight to all of them when they leave. One of the reasons Hartman feels at home at the art craft, he used to run film projectors like these when he was a teenager in Pennsylvania. He calls them state of the art. Hartman is a retired infantry sergeant with 23 years of active duty and two tours in Vietnam. He's fascinated with the art craft and displays a reproduction of an old advertisement in his office carried by a local newspaper when the theater first opened. Frank Rembush started it all. The family believes he built the first theater in the country for exclusive movie use in 1912, the Alhambra at Shelbyville. At one time, he owned 33 theaters, several in Indianapolis, including the old Ohio, where this picture was taken with his managerial personnel. Truman Rembush succeeded his father and still heads a chain known as Syndica Theaters, with screens in Batesville, Columbus, Crawfordsville, Elwood, Wabash, Huntington, and of course, Franklin. 57 years ago, Frank hired Grace Handley as his secretary. She retired four months ago, a key employee of his grandson. That's 33-year-old Mike, who as vice president runs the day-to-day -day operations of the chain. His father, Truman, remains as president. The leg room at the art craft is impressive. Unusual today? We find in most of the multiplex um, theaters and the shopping malls that it is. Um, the space they need um, in order to, to turn an audience, they, they have to cramp the seats in a little tighter in, in order to, to get a gross. Mike is convinced that a lot of people still like to go to a movie theater, though he agrees most of them are young. I don't know any kids, even today, who want to sit home with mom and dad on Friday night, especially if they have a date, and watch a videotape on television with mom and dad. They still want to get out and uh, have something to do. And I think the theaters, especially in our smaller towns, give them that opportunity. Rembushes have fought many battles to stay alive in the business, striving for an equal break with large ownerships. They still don't think they have equality when it comes to acquiring films, but they try to make up for that by maintaining an approach that has been lost in many businesses, service to the customer. Mike also sees better days ahead. He says all the many competitive outlets for movies in the 1980s means more demand, and that encourages more movie making. I think the day of short supply of motion pictures is almost over. I notice uh, in Variety that there are uh, a number more pictures being made in 1984 than there were in 83. And uh, actually, the ancillary markets have really helped us in this respect, in that um, it creates three or four other markets for that picture. They have a lot less chance of, of losing money on a picture today than they did before all these other markets became available. No one is more convinced about the future than Irene Petro. She's been popping corn at the art craft for 30 years, and she sees no shortage of famished customers. One suspects that at times the popcorn, the theater, and the operating philosophy have the edge on the movie that's playing up there on the screen.